Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Tractorman44 here. Hey, you know, I don't have my grapple yet, but I'm, I'm preparing to, uh, to move some heavy loads by uh, coming up with something for a counterweight. Now, I've had this back in the woods for a long time, at least 15 years or so, and almost hauled it off to junk pile one time, and I thought, well, you know, you can't ever tell. One of these days, maybe I might need it for a bone anchor or something. But at any rate, you can take a look right here across the middle, and upside down is written Baker. This happens to be a counterweight off of a Baker forklift. I don't remember what the capacity of that forklift was, but I want to say it was a 3,000 pound forklift. I'm going to try to adapt this to work on the back of that uh, category two three point for counterweight for the MX5400. If you see here, the way that mounts on the back of the old, the old forklift is had these one inch studs sticking out the back and it literally just bolted right into the back end of the, uh, of the forklift. I don't know what it weighs, but it is definitely heavy. Now to drill the larger diameter holes in, uh, in that thicker material, much easier than using my little light duty craftsman in the other shop. I'm using that old Champion uh, blower and forge. I think it's a number 201 uh, old drill. And of course that has a number three, number three Morris taper. So I had to go to my collection of different, uh, <laughs> different bits and different adapters and everything to drill a pilot hole and also to drill out the, uh, the one inch for those mounting studs back there. For all you really young fellows out there that don't understand or don't know how all this works, this is a Morris taper and there's a Morris taper on this drill bit and a Morris taper on this and then a female up inside here. So what you do is you drive this in here like this. Drive your wedge in, drops this guy out right here. Go to a different size by putting this one in and then it's a friction fit, just like that. You put it up inside here with the slot in a line with the slot and when you put pressure on it, it becomes a friction fit. It's a good idea when you're drilling holes this size to clamp this piece to the actual work table because if it catches in that bit and gives it a spin, it's going to bark you in the knuckles. It's going to really do you some damage or has the potential for doing some pretty good damage just as quick as you can bat an eye. I probably should uh, set a better example for the young fellas out there that just have their small home shop and just getting started into this stuff. But I got, I got everything clamped down now. The worst thing will happen if it binds like this, it'll snap the bit or it'll start uh, slipping inside this friction fit. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering uh, how I sharpen the drill bits in order to get them to pull shavings out like this right here, I have a couple of DIY drill bit sharpening videos on YouTube. It ain't uh, necessarily the way the professionals do it, but it's gotten me by over the years. So if you want, you can probably just type in drill bit sharpening, Traction Man 44, something like that. It'll probably pop up for you. But again, you know, it ain't what the pros do, I'm sure. Yeah, you see, I made a, a series of holes in this. That's why I can place this angle wherever I need to place it, you know, for optimum use on the back of the tractor. But I went ahead and made my own Category 1 three-point pins out of 7 8 bolts. Those are uh, hardened bolts. They're already drilled and welded in place. I've got this adjusted and shimmed to where these are perfectly at the same level and right where I need them to be. Now I'm going to take this four inch channel iron right here and I'm going to weld that four inch channel iron across here to make sure that it doesn't, whenever I raise this up, it doesn't make any, any change in the angle of these pins making it difficult, difficult to unload. But at the same time with this piece across here, it's going to allow me to extend off of this four inch channel iron and go right through these slots in this and put me a, um, either a draw bar or a receiver on the back side of this weight, if that makes any sense to y'all. That's what the plan is now. Here's a little better idea of what I've got in mind for that four inch channel. The draw bar should go straight out through the center. There's the lower three point pins and up top if you take a look that's not complete yet that's just kind of hanging on there not tightened up but that's going to be for our upper link connection 
That's uh, some strategically uh, welded, reasonably heavy angle iron. I laid the angle iron inside one another and cut that one edge off so that I've got a double thickness back here because of the sheer weight of this whole uh, this whole assembly. I'm kind of anxious to find out what this thing weighs, but it's uh, it's considerable. Well, there's a part bolted in place permanently for the uh, for the top link. I went ahead and put a half inch strap all the way down around here and attached it to a uh, to a stud that are created by welding the bolt head to head that actually goes through the cast iron that the front of this thing here is attached to. That way it'll transfer some of that weight instead of everything being on that one stud on the front it's going to transfer some of that weight back through here. Now don't pay any attention to this guy here that's just a shim because this is an angled piece of cast here and that's just a shim to kind of hold everything flat. So to make a drawbar, I took a uh, drawbar off of another old tractor or piece of equipment. Uh, that's a one inch by two and a quarter inch plate. I went ahead and cut that off and then slipped that right through the, the styles inside here. Had to notch them a little bit to where they would lay down and then welded that two inch receiver hitch right to it. And then we'll be able to put whatever we want on that receiver, whether it's a hook or a ball or a, a flat tongue for pulling normal wagons and trailers. Then up in front, I just went ahead and laid that across that four inch channel iron, welded it into place, and of course made the category one pins out of seven eighths bolts, and we'll have to use one to two adapters to where it'll fit on the category two on the three point. The uh, lintel iron, the four inch by six inch or whatever that is, bolts to the, uh, the one inch mounting bolts that uh, attach this counterweight to the back of the Baker forklift. And of course you can see my three point pins then, and the upper link will come right up here to the top. Unfortunately, I had to uh, to mount it upside down, so the baker is um, it's kind of misleading there, you know what I mean? doesn't really mean a whole lot with it upside down, but there's a reason for that. These indentions right here, those this is actually the bottom of it, and the steering wheels on forklifts are usually the, the rear wheels. Those wheels would actually go in and out of that concaved area whenever you would turn. Of course, there's a lot of weight missing there, so I opted to put the top on the bottom or turn it upside down so that the majority of the mass of the weight is down low, which is, like I said before, lower the center of balance. So it kind of look a little bit weird, but I think it's going to be just fine. Now, hey guys, I guess you noticed the uh, the imminent warning, letting you know that there was a, a data loss. And so that video just pretty much ended just like that. The next video is going to have the completed setup in it, uh, but I have absolutely no coverage of it. Essentially what I did is I took what I had built on the front of that and realized that it was probably not quite ergonomically uh, sound as far as the, the three-point connections on the uh, Category 2 back end of the MX-5400. So what i done, one time here a while back, I salvaged a, I think it was a 12 or 14-foot bush hog, and it had the three-point arms and everything. Of course, I torched all that stuff off and saved all that stuff. I saved the gearbox, I saved the shafts, I saved everything. But what I did, I went ahead and dug in the, in the junk pile and pulled out that entire assembly that I torched off the front of that, and I put that back together and set it right down over the top of those angle irons that I had set there and originally had the category one pins that I had made pointing to the center. Well, I set this right on the top of it, clamped it in place, and it absolutely worked out perfectly. All I had to do then was up where the top link goes, that bolt below the top link, and you'll see it on the next video. I just extended that with flat iron back to the new dual angle iron that I put there for the, for the new top link. So that's all permanently welded in place, and it worked out really, really nice. So that would have been some real good footage, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened on the, uh, the SD card. I don't know if the battery went dead. I don't know if I did leave it by accident, but I don't have any of that coverage at all. So I apologize for that. But you're going to see the finished product in the next, uh, the next video. One point that I would like to make, a lot of you guys that actually fabricate or build stuff, you know, yourself in your shop, uh, without drawing up plans and everything, I very seldom ever draw up real sophisticated and detailed plans because I always just kind of wing it, you know what I mean? But you'll find out that, that so many times you have to change horses, so to speak, in the middle of the stream. And that's what I did. Once I realized that the ergonomics wasn't correct, I thought, oh, well, I better make a change here real quick. And so that's when I got to thinking about what to do. And so uh, that's pretty common, you know, but the main thing is, you know, we didn't waste any money or anything like that. Wasted about three hours of time in doing some things that I probably didn't need to do but it doesn't matter because it all worked out very well in the end. And uh, you guys will be seeing that very, very shortly. So uh, with that having been said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. And this is Trackman44, and I'm out of here, guys.